The Prince Harry visa row has blown up again after the bombshell appeal from the Heritage Foundation. Will this finally be the move that gets Harry departed? I am here with my good friend, DC lawyer John Witherspoon, and he's going to explain it all. up everyone it's me steph the alter nerd your nerdy alternative and welcome to another dose of the daily nerd why break down the royal news and gossip of the day that's pretty much caught me eye and oh my goodness yeah let's jump into this one shall we with my good friend dc lawyer john witherspoon thank you so much for joining me today uh, how are you doing hon i am good steph how are you I'm not doing too bad i saw this though and i i immediately messaged you and i was like What is your take on this? What is the Heritage Foundation's chances of actually finally getting a win? Now, first and foremost, I'm not surprised that they've actually appealed. I'm really, really not. Um, And so the Heritage Foundation, in a nutshell, is saying that this lawsuit that they brought should actually be reopened due to the secrecy around the Biden administration's private submissions to the judge uh, in a court filing that's been seen by Newsweek and now by us, thanks to my very good friend, John Witherspoon. Now, they're essentially, when I look at this, are given a few reasons as to why they think that this lawsuit should actually continue and that this appeal should go ahead. Seems to be that there's three in particular. Uh, So the operative parts of the opinion are entirely redacted. Uh, The public record suggests that the ex-party declarations may well have contained improper argument or misleading information. Um, And then the third, uh, there was an ex-party correspondence in which the court asked the government whether it would be willing to produce additional records relating to, and it's redacted here, and the government responded to the court's inquiry with an ex-party filing resting upon apparent legal argument concerning the scope and operation of, and it's, you know, referencing some legislation there. And they essentially say, look, in light of all of this, this court should vacate its opinion and order and are all ex-party correspondents on the docket, unseal ex-party correspondent consistent with the opinion, direct the plaintiffs to brief any legal issues raised in the ex-party declarations or relating to the ex-party declarations and allow plaintiffs to brief procedures to ameliorate the lack of adversarial testing. Now, this is all legal jargon. This is why I have my friend John here to break it all down. John, to be very blunt, what the hell does all that mean? It's a good question, Steph, and it's actually not as complicated as one might think uh, by looking at it or by listening to what you just talked about. Uh, As we've discussed before, there's a fundamental legal principle in the United States and in a lot of countries that there needs to be transparency and there needs to be openness and fairness in every possible way throughout the course of a legal proceeding. And what Heritage Foundation is complaining about is two things. Number one, the ex parte communications or aspects or rulings in this case um, were prejudicial to Heritage Foundation because they did not have a sufficient opportunity to understand what was going on. Ex parte, by definition, means one-sided or to the exclusion of another side. So there were some things that the judge asked for on an ex parte basis, and there were some rulings that he made on an ex parte basis. And Heritage is saying, hey, we didn't have a fair shot at winning this case because of those things that we didn't have a chance to look at and we didn't have a chance to respond to. The other thing that they're complaining about is that there are parts of Judge Nichols' opinion that were redacted, and presumably they were redacted in order to maintain some degree of secrecy or privacy around Prince Harry's visa records and documents. And what Heritage is is complaining about is that they're saying, hey, we don't have an opportunity because you've made this stuff so secret and you've redacted so much of it, 
we don't have an opportunity to really digest what the essence of your ruling is. And so what they've asked for is uh, a, for the judge to consider a Rule 59E motion. Courts have rules just like sporting contests, soccer, basketball, you name it, all of these uh, operations or uh, all of these activities have rules and the courts are no different. Rule 59E allows a party, presumably a losing party like Heritage, to go back to the judge and say, Your Honor, we feel like you've messed something up here. We feel like we have sufficient grounds to take this to an appellate court, which is the next court up. It's the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia or Washington, D.C. Before we involve them in this and go through a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of expense and file a lot of paperwork, we want to give you an opportunity to, to go back and say, you know what? I may have done something that was not entirely um, appropriate for any number of reasons, and I'm going to get a. Uh, I'm going to to vacate my own ruling in this. I'm going to vacate the uh, the motions in this, and I am going to um, allow myself an opportunity to rethink this and maybe rule in a slightly different way. One way of thinking about it is that it's a so be sort of like a pre-appeal, and that uh, the judge has an opportunity to revise his opinion, revise his revise his ruling, perhaps release some of the uh, the ex parte information, unredact some parts of his own opinion, and then turn it over to the parties as well. At that point, um, Heritage Foundation might say, you know what, this makes a lot more sense to us. We are uh, satisfied with this, even though we lost, we're gonna deal with it. Or they might turn around and say, we wanna go to the appellate level and ask um, an appellate judge panel to take a look at this and perhaps rule differently. So that's basically where it stands right now. Um, the, uh, there's, there's a 28 day window after the judge's original ruling that uh, has to be observed before uh, it expires. Heritage Foundation has filed this within the 28-day window. And the other interesting thing is they have asked for oral arguments before the judge to allow them to explain in person and to have back and forth Q&A with the judge to explain their perspective on this and do a little bit more in-depth conversation with the judge than they would be allowed to do if they just did it uh, based on briefs and paperwork. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot more sense than all this legal jargon. I'll tell you that right now. I'm so glad you had the time to come on to explain all that. Ultimately, the main takeaway from this is that the Heritage Foundation, to me, is turning around and saying, look, we want to appeal. We want to appeal this ruling. The thing is, though, you've kept things so secretive even secretive against us that what are we actually appealing against what rationale Correct. what reason what information are we actually appealing against that led you judge to this decision it's like Correct. yeah you know we can appeal but we've actually got one hand tied behind our back and that's the judge's doing if he's keeping it so secretive away from the heritage foundation is there a way that the judge could rule that the information that the Heritage Foundation needs in order to make an effective uh, appeal, that the information could be released, but only to them, and then it's not part of the public record where the public don't get to see it unless the judge proper rules in the Heritage Foundation's favor? Is there that kind of middle ground that's available? That's a really good question, and it's a very complicated question because presumably even if you re reveal the information to the plaintiff, to the Heritage Foundation in this case, that would violate the privacy right that the judge is trying to protect of Prince Harry. And by the way, I want to I point out it's not just because it's Prince Harry 
um, if this would apply to anybody who has come into the United States and has uh, filed immigration paperwork or requested a visa or whatever it is. One of the things that is possible, and Heritage Foundation suggested this in this document, was to have some sort of a third party come in, a neutral third party, and take an additional look at the elements of this that need to get private, to be kept private, the elements of this that need to get redacted, um, that that's something that that can potentially uh, happen under certain circumstances. But I think what they're really hoping for in this case is basically for the judge to just, in so many words, say, yeah, you know what, I maybe did a little bit more redaction and I uh, than I should have. And I, I maybe kept things a little bit more private than I should have. It's a very difficult thing for the judge to do. I, I don't. Um, I don't envy the judge, Judge Nichols, in this case, because he has to walk a very fine line between protecting Prince Harry's privacy interest, which, again, is the same privacy interest that anybody else would have, and the need to have open, uh, clear uh, functioning of the judicial process and to make sure that Heritage Foundation has an opportunity to understand everything in this case and allow them to understand everything that they might use for grounds as grounds for an appeal. And I'll just I'll just I'll just add one other thing too, Steph, yeah, if I can. Of course. I, I think one thing that's important to keep in mind here, um, I realize it's frustrating for a lot of people. They want an answer, they want clarity. A lot of people think, oh, well, you know, the the judge has been, uh, you know, unduly influenced somehow. I'm very confident in saying that that's not the case. I think the real important thing out of all this is that this is a continued thorn in the side of Prince Harry. I guarantee you he is conscious of the fact that this is going on. I guarantee you he probably is not thrilled by it, um, especially if there is something that's potentially embarrassing to him. Um, and I think that it's um, it's it's going to keep him in the headlines because of his past drug use that he has admitted, uh, because of his immigration status, all of those things. It's uh, it's a pain in the neck for Harry that I'm sure he wishes would go away. It ain't going away anytime soon, though. This visa route keeps tumbling on. Any further updates? Oh, guys, we will bring it to you. Uh, with that being said, if you appreciated what came out of John's gob, and of course you did, uh, then do make sure you do follow him on Instagram if you have an Instagram profile on there. It's the only way that you're actually able to contact him if you do have any questions. Many of the videos that he does here or elsewhere, guys, on Pop popcorn planet or popcorn palace in particular please be aware he can't be able to answer all your questions uh but you know he will try his best as and where he can also as well if you appreciated this video overall and of course you did then guys you do not want to miss my next video make sure you are subscribed to join this alter nerd tribe just to make you aware we are going through a little bit of a youtube purge at the moment what does that mean well, YouTube from time to time likes to unsubscribe uh, you from channels without your knowledge and without your permission. And it looks like the YouTube purge is hitting this community at the moment. So please, uh, for those that think that they are subscribed, just double check that you are. For those that are not, please consider subscribing today so you can turn around to Satan, to YouTube and say, not today, Satan when I can get my teeth back in. With that being said, thank you so, so much for tuning into this video. Appreciate all your faces. Until the next time, you guys. Laters. Bye.